Behind me, I have two beautiful dresses. I got these fabrics for my birthday last week. I got the pattern I used to make these up also on my birthday. They are beautiful dresses that fit amazing and I'm sure you're gonna like them, so keep watching. Hi sewing friends, my name is Karina from LiftingPinsAndNeedles.com. This channel is all about sewing, limitless sewing, where I aim to share with you very practical up close footage of myself making all these garments and showing you the techniques, ways to adapt techniques, ways that you can change things sometimes to get a different look and that you can adapt to the fabric you're using. All in all, just a lot of practical content for you. So if you think that's a cool idea, Go ahead and subscribe to this channel, tap on the bell so you don't miss out when new videos go live. Last week on my birthday I went on a shopping sort of spree with my husband and I got these two amazing fabrics. When I got back home I checked in my inbox and noticed that there was a new pattern release from Itch to Stitch. You know, it's an addiction. <laughs> I'm always looking out for these patterns because I always know the fit is amazing and the designs are usually totally my style. So when I saw this pattern, I got it immediately as a birthday gift for myself and sought out to look at my new fabrics, what I could use to make this pattern in. So I've got two here. Talon Top and Dress is the name of the pattern. Talon is the name of the capital city of Estonia. It's got a double L and a double N. And I think it's really interesting that the patterns are named after places because they always brings my geography game up a little bit. We don't really know the whole world and the countries and the capitals and I really think it's interesting that the patterns are named after places and not like women's names or things like that, you know? I think it's really cool. I'm in my sewing room right now. It's not my preferred place to film. It is pouring out there, but I'm looking that it's quieting down. I think I will be able to go out there, take the pictures and film the rest of the video there. I think it's nicer, the lighting's nicer, the sound's not that echoey like it is here inside. So I think I will head out there and I'll see you outside. This pattern has three views. View A is a peplum, so it's got a seam at the waist. View B is a normal top, so you use the normal pieces of the dress, but there are specific lines to cut and make it shorter and you see is a dress and they all have in common that they have knit princess seams there is a center front seam on the design and at the back that piece is cut on the fold there is a scoop neckline with binding and long sleeves the dress is meant to heat above the knee to choose the fabric it needs to be a knit fabric that has a lot of stretch mentioned is 75 percent stretch horizontal and vertical so you basically need a really stretchy fabric ones that could work really well are double brush poly ity french terry jerseys interlocks just your very stretchy fabric that you know it's gonna allow this to fall nicely now if you choose one that's very 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 stretchy it's gonna look looser and longer than if you choose one that's a little bit less stretchy and because I've made two different dresses you might see the difference between them because I've chosen an ITY for one that is stretchy but the rayon spandex is much more stretchier for my muslin, I made it out of scraps and I never intended it to be wearable. That is a Ponty Roma and that does definitely not have 75% stretch. But my main goal was to check for the shape of the, of the princess seam to make sure that was following my body. And then I decided, you know what, I'm going to finish this garment, although it's not like it's supposed to be, but I'll show you that in a little bit. The sizing for this pattern is double zero to 20 US and designed with a standard bust and a full bust option. So if the difference between your high bust and your full bust is up to three inches, you can probably be okay with a standard bust and if it's three inches or more you can use the full bust now my difference is three inches taking into account that i am a c cup and that i usually fit standard bust sizes i never have to do a full bust adjustment or anything i cut my muslin with a standard you know bust front so i could see the fit so basically the side front and the center front will be two different pieces than the ones with the full bust those will be separate and in the instructions you'll find really detailed what pages you need to print for what so you don't have to print things that you don't need in the pattern so the construction of the dress was extremely easy in a few steps shoulder seams princess seams front and back 
you do the neckline and then you put your sleeve in the flat and then you sew the side seams including the sleeve seam in one go at the end and then you hem your sleeve and your dress or your top very simple so in up close and so personal i haven't focused on general construction there are notches to guide you and if you've never done a princess seam this is a very easy one to do it's a neat pattern you know you're not easing things into anything everything fits perfect and there are notches there to guide you i'm going to give you an inside look at my muslin how i'm going to drop this neckline on the dresses i've kept the muslin with the original neckline and i've done three different neckline finishes to share with you the first one is a technique explained in the pattern it's super super elegant super elevated look i love that and then the other two are just different ways i like to finish necklines just different ways and i'm going to show you those three in this following clip so let's hop into the practical sewing Side look for my muslin i've just used scraps of some ponty i had left it's got plenty of stretch horizontal and vertical so i thought it would be appropriate to check the fit i was mainly worried about how the shoulders were going to fit and if this curve of the princess seam was going to be my curve of my bust you can see there are some marks there to put these two together so it's very easy to put this curved seam together they fit perfect and i've marked with red there when I had my muslin on where my apex is, like where my height is and this curve conforms perfectly to my shape I was worried I would need to slash here and drop down the volume of this curve but due to the fact that this is designed for stretch fabric that stretches vertically and horizontally it's bound not to be an issue if this was woven and yeah I would probably have to manipulate something here but not in this case the other thing I've marked with this on me, with pins, how much lower I want the neckline to be. So from there down it's about 3 inches and from the center over there it's about 4. So it's just scooped, sort of like squarish, not squarish but wider, you know, not narrow, low. The original pattern piece has a center front seam but I have eliminated that for this muslin and I probably will for the dresses too. I just got that pattern piece and put it on the fold, folding away that seam allowance there. At the back, this piece is meant to be cut on the fold but because of the scraps available I did put a seam there and then there are the back ones there. This mark here is where you would cut if you're making the peplum version where you would add another piece here and it does match my waist for the dress i don't need to adjust but if i was making the peplum i would have to lengthen the bodice with the short and a lengthen line above here three eighths of an inch to match my waist but for the dress version this line here hits my waist exactly and so the length of all this is in proportion to me and that's really good the pattern piece that's going to finish the neckline and I've just cut it on the fold as instructed and now you're meant to take the short ends together put them together and then sew that with 3 8 of an inch I have finished one of the sides because it's going to be left in the inside so I've searched one of the long ends and the other one's raw that's the one that's going to go onto the neckline I've sewn this together, you can see the 3 8 seam allowance there, I've just finger pressed this open, I've divided this in four. Now this one, I'm not going to leave it at the center back, it's just going to be like towards my shoulder seam but not at the shoulder seam, it will never be seen with my hair. I have the neckline divided into four as well, I've got red pins there to mark where the quarters are, center back, center front and this, this one is on the front neckline that's where the other quarter is so I'm just going to grab these raw areas there this is the right side of my fabric so right sides to right sides and I'm going to match these quarters there 
this one with that one now this neck piece is drafted to be just slightly smaller than the neckline just slightly not that much I calculate it to be about 92% but you see I'm gonna change that percentage in the other versions I make where the fabric is thinner so I've matched these up and now I'm just gonna sew these together stretching slightly the neck piece here just slightly and I'm gonna sew that straight stitch with 3 8 seam allowance you can see this seam here is towards the back neckline and I think it will be more discreet there this is the shoulder seam that needs to be pressed towards the back, so I've made sure it's heading that way. That's been sewn on. I have done a few snips there for this curve. And then I'm just going to pull this piece up and I'm just going to fold this over that seam allowance. So I'm touching and I can feel the seam allowance right there. And so that's going to go towards the back there. And I'm just going to pin this there. And look, if I pin right there where these two meet, you have all that at the back and that's really good because it's going to facilitate stitching in the ditch in there right there so I'm going to take my time to pin this and to hand baste it on and then I'm going to go ahead and stitch in the ditch and I love this technique for a more structured fabric you'll see for my other versions I'm going to use different techniques but I love this for Pontaroma I absolutely love the technique and I have used this before but not stitching in the ditch. I have actually just top stitched on the edge there with an edge foot. But for this pattern, the instructions uh, suggest stitching in the ditch and I'm gonna do that for this one. I've got the stitch in the ditch foot. That little metal thing will be going against the fabric there. And I do stitch in the ditch slow, like I'm talking total slow. And I even put the settings on my machine to sew really slow because I don't wanna have this thread visible and this is um, not fast forward I basically want to see where each of the stitches is going to go through with the needle and I want to manipulate this so I don't have any errors and I'm just gonna take my time and do this and I'll show you how it looks like when I'm done all the way around I've stitched in the ditch and you can't even see it I mean it is in the ditch right there so it's worth it to take your time it's caught this on the other side and left a bit there like a quarter of an inch that's good it's very clean on the inside and I think on the outside it gives it a really elevated look. I wish I'd had enough of the scraps to do this piece with the same fabric, but you know, I wanted to demonstrate how to do this. So I've used a contrast black. I think it's beautiful. And this hand basting didn't take any time at all. And I can just whip it out in a second. So that's really nice. I love the finish of this. And if I decide to finish this garment, I'll finish the arm side with the same. After having measured my new circumference around there, I want to finish the neckline with this leather look jersey that I've used in the past. I've done this technique with the Isidro top last year made out of lace. Because this knee is quite structured, it's quite stretchy too, I can easily pass it through a bias tape maker just for the folds. This is a jersey so it's not cut on the bias, it's just cut normal like you would any other neck binding or neck band or anything on needs not on the bias so this is the one that says 18 at the back that's 
that means that the finished width of this after being double folded is going to be 18 millimeters wide. I found the width of this area for this double fold to fold over nicely and not meet exactly in the middle so that it's not so bulky when it's folded like that. I found my preferred width here is 3.2, 3.3 millimeters and that in inches is one and a quarter right there. So one and a quarter there by the length that you determine based on the stretch of the material you're using. Like this ITY is super stretchy, right? But this isn't ITY, this isn't as stretchy as ITY. So I have calculated 90%. I've got my binding right sides together with a dress. You can see the shiny side is my right side because that's the one I want to be seen. You know, you could use the opaque side, but I want the leather look binding thing there. So I've corded that, divided into four, and then done the same to the neckline. The neckline is bigger, of course, and I'll be stretching the binding to match the neckline as I sew with a straight stitch. And I'm just going to be sewing on the first fold there that I managed to press with my bias tape maker. And I just wanted it for the neat folds, you know. So I'm just going to be using a straight stitch for that. So I've sewn that on, stretching the binding as I went to get it to fit this circumference. And now the shiny bit is there and the other fold is there. So I'm going to keep that fold, keep that seam allowance up, keep that fold there and bring it down to meet that seam there. So it's basically wrapping over that seam allowance there. So I'm going to go and hand base this on to the edge and then top stitch. And then remove the basting stitches and then the neckline is going to look like that like shiny and on the inside it's going to be really nice and neat For the rayon dress, I'm just going to sew a regular neckband onto the edge of the neckline, so I'm not going to do any special binding technique. I've just cut a standard that I like that is 2 inches there, and the length of it, I measured the neckline and calculated 80% of that, so 20% shorter because this fabric is mega stretchy. So anywhere from 80 to 85 works fine with rayon spandex for me. And I've just chosen 80 in this opportunity. I've divided this in four. You can see the pins there, the red ones, where I've divided that in four. And this is the neckline of the dress. And I've also divided that in four with the, you can see that with the yellow pins there. So, you know, all these binding techniques have in common that you divide the neckline in four. And whatever method you're using here, you also divide in four. This one will always be slightly smaller. It's just the way that you go around putting this together that can differ. But I find this the easiest way. So I'm just going to match these red pins to the yellow pins, each of these quarters in four points. And then I'm going to serge the edges around. This is my green, super powerful <laughs> semi-industrial overlocker. It's very loud, vibrates a lot. So I'll put music when I actually sew, but I've got the neckband there on top of the neckline. This is one of the quarters I've marked and the neckline is bigger, so I'm stretching the neckband slightly as I sew these together on the edge. goal of this serge is to finish edges and it's a three thread so it's not strong enough to hold the neckband just like that in my opinion that's why I always go in and sew at a quarter of an inch with a uh, shallow zigzag stitch just to reinforce that the zigzag stitch will allow this to stretch 
but I wouldn't just serge something and just leave it and that's due to my serger and I love it but it's just for finishing seams I'm I'm not using it to sew a neat garment as such I use my domestic sewing machine as well if you had a different serger then you would sew on the neckband and that would be it but I'm just going to sew this on with my sewing machine as well and I'm going to be using a 0.5 stitch depth and a 2.5 stitch length and that will give me a shallow zigzag that I'm going to sew close to the edge there. So you can see it's shallow, it looks wavy but mainly like a straight stitch and it allows this to stretch. You can see it better on the white side of the rayon, see, wavy, stretchy. So I'll do that all the way around and that's it. I don't stitch down neckbands, I don't top stitch them, I don't enjoy doing that, I don't think it's necessary. So that this is the easiest way to finish this neckline. I've only shown you the inside of my muslin, it was a ponty and you might have seen this fabric before in another project. I had a scrap left and I was determined to make it work. And this Ponteroma has got this really, really strange type print. So that is the front and that is the back. I was working with scraps and I did invert the seams. You know, there is a seam at the back and none at the front. The neckline looks really nice. You saw how I did that and it's the same way I finished the armholes. It's super neat. I think stitch in the ditch gives it a really elegant look. And now this would be like like a shorter view B. View B is using the same pattern pieces and there is a cut line but I didn't have more so I just cut it at the length that I had. So from my natural waist it's about that much longer, about two inches longer so I would consider this a cropped type top and to not lose length in the hem I sort of did the same technique that I did on the neckline and the armholes I did to the bottom just to preserve the original length and to give it something different you know the black there the black there and the black there I think it looks cool so this is extremely cropped but I can see a use for like flowy things right now I just grabbed this black skirt because it's <laughs> what I had on hand but you can see the length is there my natural waist is there so it's about two inches below my natural waist still wearable still fits really good with the princess seams and this neckline is way higher than I would usually wear it but is this how the original pattern would fit me you know without modifications this is the arm side that would have a sleeve without modification I really like nice and closed armholes this muslin turned out super wearable <laughs> This is one of the fabrics I fell in love with the other day when I went on my birthday shopping spree and it's this ITY with flowery print. It's beautiful. I feel amazing in this print. This print is just me all over it. And for this one, I wanted to do the binding with this leather look jersey that I like to use. I got some other colors the other day and I use the same for the neckline and the armholes. I think it looks super pretty and it just I just feel amazing in this design. These hems have all been done with twin needles. Nothing special about the hems. That's just it really. There's lots of straight seams to sew, a bit of notches to match, but otherwise it's super, super fast to put together. I love this. This is the length that I achieved by adding two inches to the shortener length and line on the skirt pieces. This is how flowy it is. It's not extremely flowy and it's super figure flattering, I think. It's awesome at the back and I just I just love this dress so much. Here's a look at the top part. You can see how it goes in and then out, follows your shape. Princess seams really help with the shaping here at the bust. I think it's wonderful. You can see my arm side there, unmodified and my deeper neckline that I really like. This is my preferred. I would do this to every pattern. <laughs> Here you can see my leather look jersey. I love the look of that. I think it looks different. Same as here. I really, really like how this binding technique worked for this fabric. Really like it.
Now the fabrics I've chosen for my dresses are bordering on the lightweight side so I do need to wear them with a slip underneath you know to avoid showing any undergarment lines that are not cool to share like your garment straps and stuff like that. This is a rayon spandex that I also got the other day for my birthday and I decided to make this one with short sleeves. It's not an official option of the pattern. The pattern is long sleeves. So I determined where I wanted to cut it and added an inch of hem allowance. I did through this part, you know, so it would match the shape and this wouldn't be puckering and smaller. And for the ladies that join me on Patreon, you can see a bit of that exclusive content there. I've also put a picture on the blog post that accompanies this. I finished this neckline with the easiest and fastest way you can finish a knit neckline and it's just a neckband you know um, for rayon spandex I like 80% and it went on super fast surging first and then through my domestic sewing machine for the dresses I eliminated the front seam as the same as I did with the muslin and I did add a seam here at the back this allowed me to get these dresses out of one and a half meters which is a lot less where also I'm not doing the full length sleeves. If I did full length sleeves, although I love this dress with the sleeves, it would just limit to me wearing these maybe two out of 12 months of the year. And I wanna wear these a lot, you know, so I compromised and made a shorter sleeve. <laughs> and I find that this one, because it's stretchier than the ITY, it looks longer on me, although I cut them exactly the same. The neckline also looks lower, a little bit lower, but fine, I'm not showing cleavage or anything. This is the inside of the dress. You can see the shape of the princess seam for the standard bust. For the full bust, you have a more pro pronounced type curve and you have more room here on the front pieces. Everything is nice and neat on the inside. And at the back, you can see I added a cheeky seam there on the back. And it was just a really, really fun project. So I feel amazing in these dresses. Here is the green dress with short sleeves. The short sleeves are a good length for me, the way I like sleeves to be when I put them on. <laughs> Same length as the other one. Same nice flowy feature of the skirt and the length that I like. The fit is really good. Here you can see the fit more at the top, the waist definition that the pattern gives you. It'll make it look like you have a smaller waist than you do. It's a visual illusion and I'm very glad this design does that for you. You see a sheen on my skin, it's a sweat, you know? Anyway, this one is finished with a neckband, traditional way to finish a neckline is the easiest one that you can do and it also looks really nice. 80% length worked really good. It's nice and flat against my chest and I don't have gaping and things. I did through the hem of the sleeves and that's why that is lying really nice. It's not puckering or anything and that's something that needs to happen when you just chop off a sleeve that is meant to be long because it's going in that way. You know, so I've done that. I'm really happy with this one. I love the print of this fabric. Tomorrow, Wednesday, the 26th of February is the last day that this pattern is 20% off. It was um, released last Thursday, so it's on its release week. So if you want to have a really cute, well-fitting, neat princess seam dress that is really easy to sew, you might want to consider trying this one out. And if you like it, you can purchase it through my affiliate link down below. If you purchase through there, it doesn't cost you extra, but I gain a small commission from that sale and that supports the channel. I really hope you liked this video and got some tips where I'm giving you other options to finish necklines. You know, I'm really moody in this thing. It depends on what I'm feeling on the day, what I feel the fabric is like, and what I think might be easier or just give it a different look. So that's why I've given you all these practical options there for you to choose. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you very soon. Bye. Good night.